Okay, good morning, everyone. Welcome to my presentation about visual language models and IGI 2.0. So there is a, a, a lot of need for efficient AI computing. Uh, so this is the supply of the computing in green versus the demand in red. The demand for AI computing is increasing much faster. And software is very important. The cost is very high for advanced technology node from 65 nanometer all the way to 5 nanometer. The software cost is getting very high and getting increasingly more important. <clears throat> to cope with efficient AI computing, my previous work included deep compression and EIE. With pruning and quantization, we can compress neural network models and remove uh, redundant computing. Uh, we try to do less work, try to reject the work or avoid the work by avoiding those zeros and using fewer bits to process. And the efficient inference engine first introduced the weight of sparsity in neural network acceleration. And pruning and sparsity is getting uh, increasingly popular since around 2015 and 2016, also publications in recent years. So the goal of the efficient ML project is to bridge the gap between uh, the supply of computing and also the demand of AI computing. With algorithm and system co-design, we want to reduce the latency, the memory, low power, low energy, increase the throughput, accuracy, and most importantly, scalability. So we work on software hardware co-design for both tiny model and recently large language model, uh, focus on both dense model and also sparse, sparse model, how to accelerate sparsity and with system and hardware support. Full precision versus quantized model, quantized model for both inference and also training uh, from both uh, the distributive model and recently uh, the generative models with, uh, with uh, the diffusion uh, techniques, single modality to multi modality, which is the focus of today's talk multi model visual language model. We have a satellite project on, on quantum machine learning as well. So, this is our pr previous work, tiny machine learning with MCUNet where uh, the goal of TinyML is to design lightweighted neural networks on cheap hardware devices as low power. Where there are billions of IoT devices, MCUNet and Tiny 19 to 2021, which is two years, which push this boundary, the memory consumption from 256 kilobyte all the way to only about 32 kilobyte, and the accuracy is actually increasing. And from MCUNet V1 to MCUNet V2, we can um, squeeze the model by another four times using only uh, 30 kilobyte of SRAM and can deploy many models on microcontrollers. For example, here is a demo for patch-based inference. This is a demo of our MCUNet V2 model running on OpenMV Cam with Cortex-M7 microcontroller. The device is very small, even smaller than an airport. This demo is running person detection. For example, there is a person sitting away from the device, while our model can detect the person. This is very difficult for tiny deep learning or microcontrollers due to the limited memory size, while our method can address the problem. Now there is a person working from right to the left, and it is detected by our model. Okay, for the sake of time, I'll continue the next chapter for not only inference, but also training on device. In this video, we show that we can perform tiny... For example, on-device training can help Customize the model and uh, is more demanding but more challenging since we need to perform backpropagation locally on the edge device, which requires storing those intermediate activations different from inference and requiring much more um, number of uh, um, much more memory footprint than inference. So to deal with the problem, we proposed the uh, quantization aware scaling for 8-bit quantized training to stabilize. Uh, the weight over gradient ratio between A training versus IP uh, 32 training. And then we use a sparse update. We find not all the layers are contributing equally. So uh, we can sparsely update a few layers. And here we have two buttons to provide uh, the label to the model. Locally, everything is running locally on this device, which has only 5, 12 kilobyte of SRAM locally on the, on the model and uh, 2 megabyte of flash. And finally, we deploy, design this tiny training engine to implement quantization aware scaling and also the uh, sparse update. So after training, we can test. Now we can see there's person versus no person. Person in red, no person will be in green. It can be 
uh, classified very smoothly. So basically, that's HAI 1.0, okay? trains basic model for each task, like medical imaging, autonomous driving, smart manufacturing, machine translation, different models. We have different tasks, different tasks. We have different task-specific models. And the limitation is that we need a different model and different data for different tasks. And there, the lack of negative sample for training really hinders uh, several use cases, for example, anomaly detection. The, uh, the abnormal case, the training image is much smaller. And there's limited generalization capability. Um, very easy to encounter failure for those corner cases. So IGI 2.0 is basically uh, demanding for us to use general models with world knowledge by using transformers, large language models, uh, large capacity. We want to have just one model, but can handle multiple different tasks with zero shot learning capability, which is enhanced by, by large language models world knowledge with advanced reasoning capability, with in-context learning capability, few shot learning capability, and visual chain of thought capability. We also want to have uh, those instruction following proficiency. No matter if it is landmark recognition, driving, patient monitoring, smart manufacturing later, we'll see several demos where we use a single visual language model, the VILA visual language model, that can handle all these cases on AHS and RE. So this talk contains three parts. We first talk about visual language model pre-training, uh, the VILA visual language model to appear at CVPR this year. Uh, the VILA 2.7 billion parameter model can be deployed on a JSON or a nano. And then we'll talk about model compression and quantization for large language model. Particularly, we discuss AWQ activation aware quantization, which is the technique behind NVIDIA's chat with RTX and NVIDIA Tensor RTLM to appear at MLSYS this year that can quantize visual language model and large language model to 4 bit weight to, to avoid the weight memory uh, bandwidth bottleneck. So that can compress a big villa to a small villa with only 4 bit. <clears throat> and finally, I will introduce an efficient deployment engine called a Tiny Chat that can deploy the visual language model, the VILA, and other large language models on mobile devices. Okay, so let's start with VILA, the visual language model on the edge. So the goal of VILA is to support multi-model large language model, both the vision, VI, and also the language, to enhance the visual reasoning by the language model and enable in-context learning and reasoning across uh, different many images, not just one image, but more, multiple images. In context learning means we can just give the context, give some examples without explicitly, explicitly talking about what is the task. And for example, here, uh, pandas three, dogs two, and then we feed this image, you can tell the task is to count the number of animals and it will say cats three, simultaneous classification and counting. And the challenge that we want to learn from visual prompts, visual inputs, but we don't want to deploy, uh, de destroy the large language model. Another challenge is that uh, having both visual and language part is very computationally heavy to deploy on the edge. Our solution is Vila, which provides an efficient recipe from data curation to training to deployment for visual language model. We train it with interleaved image text pre-training. For example, here is the interleaved um, image text, image text uh, data set format enables such kind of in-context learning. So we concatenate all the tokens together, visual token extracted by VIT followed by a projector. We train this projector, concatenate it with a text token, so everything it becomes token. Once everything is token, we can feed it to the large language model. And different from prior work, we opened up this large language model and fine tune it together, tune it together with the visual pro projector. We find that's very crucial to enable multi image reasoning. So we can deploy it on actually on JSON ORI. 
for example, given this image, we can ask any uh, safety concerns. I can tell it's a person hanging from a rope. And several safety concerns with activities such as the risk of falling down. And in a um, factory uh, scenario, how many cars are jacked up? I can answer two cars are jacked up. And there's a person whose head is under the car with color of his gloves and can tell it's orange. It's instantaneous. The answer is very quick. We can recognize the car is actually a Jeep. And we can ask what is unusual about the situation in the image. This is a satellite or from a UAV image. I can tell there's a large number of cars on the road causes a significant increase of the traffic. What is unusual about this image? Maybe self-driving scenario, corner case, see lots of deers. It's not common for deer to cross the road. And should the driver honk at the animals? We can see it's very good at handling such corner cases using just one model. Generally not recommended to honk at the animals. Okay, so this is showing the powerfulness of handling those corner cases just using one single model. And let's see some in-context learning and multi-image reasoning capability of Vila. For example, um, given this example, uh, the first logo, we give the, this logo and the company is famous for search engine. Second logo, famous for operating system. Apple logo, famous for iPhone and Mac. And we give the NVIDIA logo, it can say it's famous for GPUs. This is a prediction without explicitly telling the task, but inferring the task from this context. Similarly, this image, famous for fried chicken, this image, unbeatable fish and chips, this image, a home to ramen, this image, famous for, famous, a home to greatest pizza. We can also do multi-image reasoning, for example, how much should I pay for all the beers on the table according to the price on the menu? Initially, the answer is wrong, but we can enable a visual uh, chain of thought prompted with think step by step. And then I can say the beer on the table is a magna, it refers to, to uh, OCR, this is magna, uh, which is priced at $6. You can also associate with magna with the menu here, $6 each. I can do uh, counting, uh, detection and counting. There are two bottles of magna, therefore the total cost is six times two is 12. Multi-image reasoning, another case. What's the implementation, implication of temperature based on this image from 2084, uh, 1984 and 2012? It a, a, shows a comparison of the Arctic ice cover in 84 and uh, 2012. The implication is that the ice cover significantly decreased over the years. Climate change, uh, various implications such as um, warmer temperatures, melting sea ice. So very helpful for um, environmental uh, study. There are several in-context learning examples, given some context, few short examples, and then provide this target image, you can tell uh, the prediction. For example, telling, uh, to doing a, a OCR, doing the math, um, writing a poem, and talking about the style. In particular, the Vila is very useful for uh, a lot of real-world applications, like for autonomous driving. We can enable explainable self-driving and deploy it on our ring. If you are driving, should you honk at the pedestrians? And can say it's not appropriate to honk, impolite and disrespectful. There's a lot of common sense and world knowledge encoded here. We not just learn from the image, but such plot lightness and also um, this common sense is learned from, from the language. So language really helped with the visual perception. Similarly, for the driver monitor system, we can ask if the driver is distracted, is the driver on the phone, how many people in the car, what is the passenger seating? You don't have to train specific models for each task, but just single model uh, with different, uh, different tasks. We can also use it for UAV monitoring. Does the facilities look good? It looks in good condition. No need for immediate maintenance. Also for healthcare, rather than having some nurse looking at the patient 24 hours to monitor the status, we can put a villa and have a dressing hurry over there and monitor the patient's status, critical condition, ventilator, asleep in the hospital bed. Here we have an interesting example for training session 
what is the training session about? It's about CPR. Will the practice cause pain on the patient in the image? Actually, this is a dummy person. It shouldn't cause pain. And Vila can answer it correctly. This is a simulation and not real patient does not cause pain. It's a mannequin and not a living person. So it's understanding and doing the reasoning very well. Vila for smart factory. We can ask how many chip bags are picked by the robot arm. You can tell from this short video, two chip bags are picked up. Um, it, the eight input images are sampled two frames per second. How long does it take for the robot arm to pick up the chip bag? They can do some reasoning and talk about it, it takes 1.5 seconds. And also we can do defect inspection. The building in healthy condition is actually having cracks and chips, old and poorly maintained, damage and war and safety risks require repair and maintenance. So very helpful for um, monitoring and uh, the deep defect inspection. So how do we deploy such uh, a large model on edge device? So introduce large language model compression and low bit quantization. So quantization can reduce the deployment cost. For example, uh, it can map a floating point range into an integer range and reduce the number of serving cost. But conventional um, quantization methods widely used for vision models does not apply to large language model due to the bottleneck of these outliers. We find uh, the activation channels have many outliers wasting the dynamic range because many channels will be clamped to zero. Our solution is smooth the activations. Okay, so this is the activation, this is the weight, this is before smoothing, this is the after smoothing. Uh, 100 times 1 equal to 10 by 10. So 100, this is a large channel, this is a small channel, and we equalize them so that um, the uh, activation will be smoothed. We migrate the quantization difficulty from the activation uh, to the weight, so the activation is much smoother. And as a result, we can maintain the accuracy and even faster and reducing the number of GPUs by half. So that's the 8-bit weight 8-bit activation quantization with smooth quant for the cloud. But for the edge, we want a single batch serving. And W888 cannot address the low, low computational intensity with decoding, where single batch, single uh, batch LM inference is memory bounded, and the memory is bounded by the weight. So we need to e aggressively quantize the weight to 8-bit. So can we quantize the weight to 4-bit without losing accuracy? So this is the AWQ for on-device LLM, which is a very widely used recipe uh, for activation aware, weight on quantization for LLM compression and acceleration on the edge, like JSON Orient, like AIPC. This is a very widely used approach. And the idea is that we quantize the weight to 4-bit and leave the activation in FP16 and the arithmetic in FP16 so that we solve the memory, bu memory bandwidth bottleneck for the weights. And in the meantime, we can well maintain the accuracy since activation is not a bottleneck and the compute is not a bottleneck here. And the insight here is that we want to leverage activation awareness. Okay, We preserve the sitting weight channel by scaling according to the activation magnitude. Although we are quantizing the weight, we should not look at the weight magnitude, but look at the activation uh, magnitude. If the activation channel is large, we should preserve the weight. One way to preserve the weight is by introducing FP16 for this current channel, but FP16 is not friendly by introducing such a mixed precision scenario. So we find simply by scaling up this channel and protect the, this channel. Uh, intuition is that if you scale up this channel by two, you effectively uh, added one more bit. If you scale up by four, you effectively added two uh, two more bits. And some of the channels, if the activation is small, we are actually scaling them down. So um, on, on average, we are using the similar approach to pushing the quantization difficulty between actually activation and the weight, similar to smooth quant. So AWQ is the supporting technique behind the NVIDIA chat with RTX. Um, and there, this is a demo that, uh, we did long before that last summer. 
to write a program to sort an array in C, and this is running locally on the laptop uh, very fast. So the advantage of AWQ is that it's accurate, simple, and easy to implement. There is no backpropagation needed, less dependency on the calibration data set compared with a regression-based method such as GPTQ. Uh, this is comparison with AWQ versus GPTQ. Uh, when you have the, this is the number of calibration sequences. You, if the sequence gets smaller, GPTQ's perplexity degrade very fast, but AWQ remain very, very flat. And AWQ doesn't rely on the calibration set, so it generalizes better without having to overfit the calibration data set. So across different data sets, if we calibrate it on PubMed and evaluate on PubMed, GPTQ and ours are both very good. But if you calibrate on one data set, but evaluate on a different data set, our uh, method AWQ is much more robust to a new data set. So AWQ works quite well for multi-model uh, language model. This is Open Flamingo for captioning. Run to nearest model says a model airplane flying in the sky, but AWQ says a toy airplane sitting on a grass field. RTA method says a man is holding a baby elephant versus AWQ says is posing with an elephant. So smooth quantum and AWQ can, uh, is widely used these days by NVIDIA, Tensor RTLM, IBM Granite, VLM, Berkeley uh, Fast Chat, and also the Hugging Face Transformer Quantization API and several startups and open source projects. Okay, so we have the VLA model. We have the compression and quantization technique. Now let's deploy them using the Tiny Chat, which is an efficient RM inference engine on the edge. So Tiny Chat is a lightweighted serving infrastructure. It's based on Python. It's lightweighted. It's efficient. So Hugging Face is very easy to use, but slow. Uh, Tensor TLM it has high efficiency, but harder to use, C++ based. And Tiny Chat is efficient and lightweighted. It's Python native. It's, it is composable with other stacks like VLM. So Tiny Chat achieves up, up to 1.5 times faster uh, for Llama models compared with other systems. Uh, this is the result on Jason Ori uh, compared with uh, different Llama models and different coding models, Mistral and also Falcon. And Tiny Chat can seamlessly support visual language model to accelerate the visual language model across different GPU platforms. Deliver, delivering up to 3x speed up compared with the uh, FP16 FP16 counterpart. Uh, this is the 4090. This is on the Ori. This is on the A100. So this is comparing FP16 versus the Int4 AWQ Vila versus the FP16 Vila versus the AWQ Vila. Uh, in particular, on the Ori, it can run uh, 35 tokens per second with the AWQ Vila 7B. So this is example running um, the uh, JSON Ori, uh, running on JSON Ori with the Llama 2 model. Not only on JSON Ori, but also we build this tiny chat computer based on JSON Ori Nano. We 3D printed this box. We are asking here, recommend some attractions in Boston and talk about Museum of Fine Arts, Harvard Square. Etc. This is the 7B Llama model. In the back, you can see actually it's running on a very small JSON Ori Nano in the back. And the quantization approach here is using the AWQ. And Tiny Chat is the technique behind many AIPC projects. We seamlessly support personal laptops uh, with both Intel and ARM CPUs. We build this Tiny Chat engine that is purely started from built from scratch, there's no dependency. Uh, we have Tiny Chat for the GPU and also Tiny Chat engine. Two problems, but actually um, they are the similar technique. So if you have a ARM device, feel free to download Tiny Chat engine and you can seamlessly compile since there is no dependency and deploy it on both Intel and ARM CPUs. Okay, so a short summary here, uh, Tiny Chat and Vila, uh, paved the way for IJAY 2.0 for such use, exploiting foundation model to achieve much better 
generalization capability, few short learning capability, and much better world knowledge. Uh, first, we use VILA for multi-model uh, capability, providing multi-model capability for large language models. And then we use AWQ to quantize VILA to four bit, four X weight reduction by using the activation awareness. And finally, we use NHAT, an efficient inference framework to deploy VILA on the JSON Ori and JSON Ori Nano. Okay, so we built a demo. Feel free to try out Vila um, on, on the vila.halab.ai. And everything is uh, open source, including all the training code of Vila, uh, use 128 GPUs, and also the quantization recipe and deployment recipe. If you have a laptop, you can uh, go to vila.halab.ai and use the code over there to run Vila on your laptop. So in summary, um, Azure AI 2.0 requires full stack optimization. Vila is a very good example. Um, the application side, uh, Vila is lightweighted, Vila 2.7b, uh, explores this interleaved image text to enable in-context learning capability and also multi-image reasoning capability and generalization across different scenarios we have seen the demo so this is the demand of computation model compression bridged the gap between the demand of um, supply of computation to quantize the model to four bit solve the memory bandwidth issue and deploy it using the tiny chat uh, with which is the efficient system which is the supply of computation hey thanks for the listening that's all for my presentation. And finally, we have uh, tried to uh, disseminate this research by the efficient ML.ai course is open to the public. All the techniques I described today is taught over there. And one of the homework is actually deployed in the Llama on the laptop. Feel free to access this course. Thank you. Wow. Uh, thank you very much, Song, for this excellent presentation. I think that was the, the perfect way to kick off uh, our forum on Chain at the Edge. We have several questions here. Please, everyone, use the, the Q&A. Uh, thank you, and Song, for leaving so much time for questions. One first one to kick things off. Given the relative speed with which, uh, you know, transformers and LMs have become prominent in deep learning and AI, is it likely or is it possible that, you know, they will be disrupted by a similar technical breakthrough? I guess the question is, what, what do you think about the permanence of this type of model being used today that's in, in vision and in other applications? Yeah, I find in 2023, 2024, uh, the big the landscape of tiny ML drastically changed with the advent of large language model and the visual language model, uh, particularly on generalization. We can have mm -hmm. a much capable model. Just one model can do a lot of stuff uh, by exploiting uh, by incorporating the world knowledge into the vision. Uh, language can really help vision. I think that will be a trend. Okay. And do you think that this this help or this support will come from the current architectures being used in the cloud as well, like the transformer diffusion attention mechanism? Or is there a possibility that something equally breakthrough may benefit uh, the ecosystem? Yeah, I do think so. I do think uh, new architectures will emerge. Uh, transformer is still the uh, very efficient way that scale mm -hmm. very well and GPU parallelize very well. But there are several challenges I didn't have time to cover today. For example, handling large resolution image um, because the, the token number of tokens grows quadratically with the resolution. Actually, here we use a linear transformer in this case uh, called efficient VIT to deal with the uh, large number of token issue and even uh, accelerated the SAM model by 50, almost 50 times faster, which is wow. this is already being used inside NVIDIA using efficient VIT SAM. Um, there is a huge amount of opportunity to innovate new architectures uh, like efficient VIT SAM uh, to use linear attention, use combined and, and attention for such level of uh, uh, architectural uh, improvements. Fantastic. Thank you. So we'll go to a question from Oscar Minez. His question is about Vila. Is it a Python library or a system? What What is it? Uh, so let me go that go to that slide. So Vila is the visual language model. Okay, so this is the application side. So this is the Vila. This is the model. Uh, this is the model, the weight, the trained with 128 GPUs. And quantization recipe is called AWQ. 
and the inference engine is tightly chat. So that's the relationship between these three projects. Right. That's the full and the stack, single. Think, yeah. yeah, that's a full full stack. Yeah, exactly. This is the stack. And if you want to uh, play with it, dive deeper into it, you can access vlab.hanlab.ai, which contains the link to the GitHub repo, which has the whole recipe from from training to fine tuning to quantization to deployment. We open sourced everything. Excellent. So next question uh, from a PhD student, Bilal Nuan. They have a research interest in TinyML, and their question is a bit open-ended. It's any advice you'd have on what to focus on for a PhD student at this point? At this point, I think um, if just one word, I think is scaling. Okay? You want to scale them down mm -hmm. to fit any edge devices. And also we want to scale up uh, to train models with more data and have matter, better generalization, better world knowledge. So scaling is a permanent topic, I think. Cool, yeah. So next question, what happens if you quantize the activation and arithmetic to four bit? Does it impact accuracy? Yeah, we are recently working on that. Actually, that is very promising. Um, there's there's hope to quantize both the activation and wait to four bit. Cool. And, and what about mixed precision in that sense? Do you, do you find a need to, to allocate different precisions to different parts of the network? Yes, that's a good question. For example, if you allocate only 1% of the sitting weight to FP16, that can greatly bring back the degradation of the mm -hmm. perplexity. Uh, so with some system and the hardware support, I think this is a, um, a good approach. But of course, that adds some complexity to the inference library. So uh, we just find another approach we can, which can serve equally the same purpose, uh, which is basically uh, scaling up uh, scaling up those channels by a by some number larger than one, it can serve the equal equally serve the purpose. Like multiplying by two, you are equally equivalently adding allocating one more bit. Okay, excellent. So this next question, I think you showed two jets and Orin, a jets and Orin, a jets and nano. So the question is, the Orin here has sixty four gigabytes GPU VRAM. Is that that's a question? Right. Okay. Right, but this just already Nano really have only eight gigabyte. Excluding the operating system, it is only six six gigabyte. Wow. So deploying just already Nano is, I think, is quite interesting. And Vila two point seven B can be well deployed in this just already Nano. We actually have a GTC demo, uh, and last week, which right. is uh, going to Vila two point seven B. Right. And so in that case, the tiny chat, I think that was on the nano. What would be the power consumption uh, roughly in, in those cases where you're running on, on the, the six gigabyte GPU? Uh, this demo, um, this slide, this is running on the 64 gigabyte, but we are now using all the 64 gigabyte. After four bit quantization, it require only three and a half gigabyte. That's why it can be deployed on JSON or nano, which has only eight gigabyte, total six gigabyte useful memory here. Okay, perfect. So we have, we have a few minutes left and there's lots of great great questions coming in. I'll try to to summarize some of the ones that are common. So there's more discussion on uh, ultra low bit, one to three bit question, uh, LLMs. Uh, are you, I think you alluded to this, you are looking at that to confirm and you have seen some progress there. Uh, we find it's, it's using AWQ is possible to uh, bring the gap closer, but still the gap is, a bit larger, especially compared with, you can just train a model that's 2x smaller. Um, the diminishing return, we, we find currently it happens around four bits. Uh, AWQ definitely helps. Uh, we, we have the results in the paper with two bit quantization, but still the gap is a bit large. Okay, got it. So a couple minutes here, lots of questions. And if your questions aren't answered here, they do get posted to a forum. So there's, you can keep the conversation going. Another another question I see um, is is uh, oh you, you can also answer them directly within the chat as well for all our speakers just quickly. Uh, what about fine tuning? Uh, uh, so uh, is this something you can incorporate at the edge, incorporating AWQ during training? Uh, I see a few questions here about how do you think about fine tuning? Right, fine tuning is definitely uh, one of our interests. For example, this project on device training under two fifty six kilobyte of memory is a fine tuning technique. So one key idea is using sparse fine tuning. Uh, since during fine tuning, the capacity you needed is much smaller, so you can sparsely find the crucial layers to update. Uh, we also uh, recently had a paper called Bit Delta. We can encode 
the delta after fine tuning to a single bit, just one bit to encode the delta, uh, followed by a per tensor scaling factor, uh, which can simultaneously serve uh, more than eight models on a single GPU, uh, not using CPU. So feel free to check out that paper called Beat Delta. That's for Fantastic. large language models. Uh, there's also a paper called POC Engine from Micro last year where we can fine tune Llama 27B on JS and Ori. That's using okay. sparse update and a tiny training engine. Okay. Well, so this was a very, very popular talk. There's lots of questions here. If you have time, so I'm going to ask you to maybe stick around and answer some of them over the chat if you can, or, or in the form, of course. And a big thank you again from, from all of Tiny Mel for giving the keynote here today. So that will conclude it. And, and thank you very much, uh, Dr. Han. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. A big thank you again to all of our sponsors that make this possible. Uh, in particular, thank you to the executive strategic partners of TinyML, Qualcomm AI, Advancing AI Research to Make Efficient AI Ubiquitous, also Sentient, Making Edge AI a Reality, the Platinum Strategic Partners, Embed UR, uh, Sony AI, uh, Deploy Vision AI at the Edge at Scale, the Gold Strategic Partners, Arm, Edge Impulse, Infineon, Renaissance, ST Micro, and Synaptics, and the Silver Strategic Partners, which we have here, AI Zip, Arduino, Brainship, Efficient, Greenwaves, Gravity, Climax, Imagimob, Inetera, Noda AI, NXP, Procter & Gamble, Schneider Electric, SenseML, Silicon Labs, and TDK. So that concludes our first day. Don't forget, we have a lot more action back agenda for tomorrow as well, starting at the same time. So that concludes our session for today, and thank you for joining everyone. See you tomorrow.